Perhaps her most important female friend was her sister Vanessa. But after that, it would have been the writer Vita Sackville West. She was my mother's most intimate friend. In fact, for a short period, they were lovers. Virginia Woolf loved women. She was a married woman, deeply involved in her marriage. It was a marriage which left space for very intense, even erotic relations with other women. Woolf's own activities uh, included this rather formidable body of feminist work on the question of the intellectual status of women. And this exchange gave rise to a number of writings, finally, A Room of One's Own, which was her most thought out version of, of the relation of women to writing and to questions of fame. Set in Cambridge, she mocks the institution that wouldn't allow her, a woman, to enter a university library where her father had given manuscripts. For here again, we come within range of that very interesting and obscure masculine complex, which has had so much influence on the women's movement, that deep-seated desire, not so much that she shall be inferior, as that he shall be superior. Virginia Woolf often says, why should more attention be given to books about war or government or football, <laughs> as opposed to um, stories about women going shopping uh, or making a meal? Later on, she wrote an even more inflammatory book. It was published in 1938 uh, called Three Guineas, uh, which was an indictment of both fascism and war from a feminist perspective. She and Leonard had gone to Germany in the late 30s, and I don't remember the date. They actually had gone on a motoring tour to see for themselves. Virginia Woolf and Leonard Woolf were very worried that in the event of invasion by the Germans, that they would be imprisoned for their political work and because Leonard was a Jew. They knew they were on Hitler's blacklist. They had made, actually, very practical suicide plans in case of an invasion. She was extremely despairing about her final book, Between the Acts, and felt that uh, she'd lost her talent. She felt useless in wartime. She felt that the role of the writer, the novelist, was something that seemed to have no point anymore. They were constantly, when the war started, being bombed and strafed by German planes. And the normality of being constantly, constantly under of attack the kind of stress, the kind of tension and, and horror that, that happened from this war day in and day out was, was an enormous, I think, part of her, her final decision to commit suicide. She wasn't sleeping and she wasn't eating and she was beginning to border on hallucination. And I think she took um, a, a courageous, uh, even a rational decision uh, to end her life because she felt that she was going into a dark place and there might be no return from it. She thought, well, I'm losing my wits. I'm going, I can't keep it up, and I shall be, I shall be a burden on Leonard. I can't go on, I can't pull myself together. And she drowned herself. And I think it was a brave thing to do. It was an extraordinary, um, uh, cruel, self-inflicted death. Because she could swim very well. And the instinct of a person drowning must be to save themselves. She was wearing a heavy overcoat and put a stone in the pocket, but all the same, she forced herself to die in the cold water of the river. One of the most gallant, in a way, actions of our whole life. There's been an enormous uh, and wonderful industry of editing her posthumous work, you know, putting the essays and the letters and the diaries into marvellous editions. And this has meant that we see her as a much more uh, muscular, prolific, energetic, strong, uh, big writer than I think she was thought of at the time. We've looked for a long time admiringly at her novels because they were experimental and they uncovered new methods and ways of doing things. But I think it's possible that in the long run it may be that her diaries and her letters are what we most uh, value. They have a texture to them, a richness of observation. What sort of diary should I like mine to be? Something loose-knit and yet not slovenly, 
so elastic that it will embrace anything solemn, slight, or beautiful that comes into my mind. I should like it to resemble some deep old desk or capacious holdall in which one flings a mass of odds and ends without looking them through. I should like to come back after a year or two and find that the collection had sorted itself and refined itself and coalesced, as such deposits so mysteriously do, into a mould, transparent enough to reflect the light of our life and yet steady, tranquil compounds with the aloofness of a work of art. She uh, uh, once said to me, um, nothing has really happened until it's been described. And she meant described in words. Therefore, she said, write a lot of letters to your family and friends. Keep a diary, she said. Don't let a day pass without recording it, whether anything interesting has happened or not. Something interesting happens every day, she said.